This was the frontier, the rolling plains, the forests, the templed hills, a challenge and a promise. This was America 200 years ago. Here the pioneer farmer found his homestead, built his cabin humble and bare, fashioned his crude tools, a hand-wrought scythe, a hoe, a plow rough-hewn from oak. With such as these, the farmer broke the virgin soil, gave it strange seed, reaped his harvest, threshed his grain. And though he labored long and hard, no man is better than his tools. A thousand fertile acres in this valley, the homemade plow could till the soil of only one. But soon, echoing along the frontier, a new note was heard, sounding a challenge to the wilderness. The clang of hammer on steel. The blacksmith had come. And from the magic of his anvil sprang new and better tools. His plow was shot with iron. His harrow tipped with steel. His scythe was razor -keen. He forged a bigger rake and gave it wheels. All these the farmer took and used to good advantage. He cleared more ground. He raised more crops and built a shed to house his new possessions. Then with the dawn of the 19th century came the age of science, the age of invention, bringing new tools to a new generation. Bright steel was the plowshare whispering through the soil. And on the scene, with whir and clatter, strange implements appeared. Machines, farm machines, all kinds of them. Machines for every purpose. Machines that mowed, machines that reaped. And each year saw more improvements. Each machine proved better than the last. All were designed to lighten the farmer's daily task, to bring more acreage under cultivation. And yet, with the coming of the horse-drawn implements, there came new problems, too. For horses could be expensive in many ways. They meant long hours of work and worry. And the more horses, the greater the farmer's drudgery. Stables to clean, buckets of feed to fetch and carry, harness to oil and polish. Valuable time spent on tedious little chores. However, for all these problems, there was an answer. The answer could be heard in the voice of power, mechanical power, a great new miracle, and one destined to solve the major problems of the farm. These early steam engines were the humble beginnings, but soon they were to improve, change in form. Eventually, wheels were added, and the door to the future had opened. Down through the years, models continued to improve, and at last, a practical self-propelling steam engine was invented. They called it a tractor. Operating as a stationary power plant, the early steam tractor proved highly successful. However, these iron monsters were never quite suited to field work. In certain localities and in certain seasons, when the ground was soft and boggy, the tremendous weight of the tractor uh, proved something of a handicap. So to overcome this fault, the engineers simply made the wheels wider. But as the width increased, so did the weight, and the results were always the same. However, the real solution was soon to be discovered, as we shall see. At the turn of the century, a new kind of power was introduced, internal combustion. The first gasoline tractor, however, was still crude, still cumbersome and heavy. This was also true of the early oil-burning tractor. But the growing pains were almost over. Soon the track-type machine appeared. Weight was distributed, and the problem of soft, boggy soil was solved. In all types of machines, however, the final answer seemed to lie in a drastic reduction of weight and size. And eventually, these smaller, lighter machines were developed. The engineers had almost reached their goal. A few more refinements, a few changes in design, and then came the tractors of today. Compact, powerful, every make and model precision built, designed to meet any demand, any challenge. And what a change these modern tractors have wrought in the field of American agriculture. 200 years ago, this was the farm of the pioneer. 
an acre of ground scratched from the forest. Today, the average American farm has 150 acres under cultivation. But more than that, the farmer has gained this extra land, these added crops, with little cost in sweat and toil. For the tractor has lightened his labor at every turn. Here indeed is a new kind of horse. A horse of steel that gives much, but demands little in return. A few simple tools for minor adjustments a drum of fuel to feed its motor, lubricants to protect it from wear and to keep it running smoothly. Yes, the tractor is the new power center of the farm. Lightweight, economical, versatile. It has replaced the plodding horse flesh of yesterday with the dynamic horse power of today. And here begins a new story for it's one thing to have horsepower, another to hold it. To operate at top efficiency, to develop and use all its potential horsepower, every tractor must have proper care. So it's just a matter of good business for the farmer to protect his power plant by servicing it regularly. For tractor neglect means tractor trouble. It means an ever-increasing loss of those valuable horses under the hood. Here is the inevitable result. This once proud tractor is now a victim of gross neglect. Old, worn out before its time, it stands abandoned to the elements. A sorry end for a valuable machine. Here is a lost investment, a piece of junk. Once this tractor was bright and shiny and new. Now there's nothing new about it. Or is there? Yes. Down here in the toolbox, there's something new. The one thing that should be worn out with honest use. It's the owner's instruction book. The key to common sense tractor care designed for the sole purpose of helping this owner hold his horsepower. There's information on operation, lubrication, adjustment, but uh, let's look at lubrication on page 19. The lubrication chart clearly indicates all points to be checked and tells how and when each should be serviced. Most late model tractors require only three or four different kinds of lubricants a good quality motor oil to be changed regularly as specified, a tough adhesive gear oil also to be changed at regular intervals, a tacky grease that's both shock and squeeze proof, and for some models, a special grease is required for the water pump. Then there's the matter of fuel. It's most important to buy clean fuel, keep it clean, handle it clean. Had these simple instructions been observed, this tractor would have held much of that lost horsepower. All fuel and lubricants should be of the highest quality and comply with a tractor manufacturer's recommendations. The instruction book points out the need for servicing all important parts. Here, for instance, is the air cleaner. While air is necessary to proper combustion, the dust and grit that comes with it can cause trouble. The air cleaner, composed of a series of screens and an oil bath, is designed to filter out these foreign elements. This all-important unit should be serviced regularly. The instruction book gives full details of how it should be done. Here's a section on spark plugs. Faulty plugs mean loss of fuel as well as power. Cracked plugs should be discarded. All plugs should be cleaned regularly. And the gap settings checked to correspond with the tractor manufacturer's recommendations. The maintenance of the lubricating system is explained in detail. The oil filter must provide clean oil for the motor at all times. A clogged filter means premature motor wear. When deposits begin to form, this inner filtering element should always be replaced with a clean one. 
At the same time, the bayonet gauge should be checked to determine the level of oil in the crankcase. Engine oil should be drained at recommended periods and then replaced with clean, fresh oil. Crankcase oil should be checked daily and kept at a safe level while the tractor is in use. It's this careful attention to every detail that would have held still more horsepower in this neglected motor. Here's a new page, some notes on winter storage. Remember, this is the same instruction book that spent all its winters at the bottom of the toolbox. Had the owner troubled to get it out and read it, this scene would have been quite different. Then the tractor would have been properly stored, sheltered from the wind and weather. Its wheels would be blocked up to conserve rubber, its radiator drained, its engine flushed and crankcase filled with fresh oil, its fuel tank and carburetor drained too, to prevent the collection of gum. And the whole tractor would be clean and bright. In contrast, the instruction book would finally begin to show signs of honest, useful service. Wear out the instruction book, save the tractor. That's a mighty good slogan. For tractor maintenance cannot be built in at the factory. That's the farmer's job. Of course, his tractor dealer and petroleum supplier will be glad to help him in every way. The farmer with his tractor and his farm machine have won the frontier have made it a carpet of harvest gold. Today, the rolling plains of America yield up their bounty and give it to the entire world. Oh.